Hello students, today's agenda is um, to have a pre-assessment. We're going to have a small warm-up and we'll learn about units and you will be able to work on 1.1. Today, students will be able to define units given a scenario. So you have worked with um, units before, but now it's going to be related to a scenario. So let's have the warm-up. Um, we did already a pre-assessment in class, so... Try it, pause the video, and now I'm going to give the answers. Hopefully, you already tried it on your own because that's what warm-ups are, to see how much you know. Okay, so this dot means multiplication. So negative times negative becomes positive, and 4 times 2 is 8. And again, remember to try it before you see the answers. Negative in division, also negative divided by positive is negative, and 8 divided by 1 is 8. Okay, so for multiplication and division is the same. If the, if the signs are the same, the answer is positive. If the signs are different, the answer is negative. That's for multiplication and division. In here, we have a fraction, but when the number is uh, bigger on top, that means that we're going to get a whole number. Uh, so 24 divided by negative 3 is positive divided by negative, negative, because the signs are different, and 24 divided by 3 is 8. Now, with this next two, we have subtraction and addition. Whenever we have two signs, two negative signs together, and let me share with you that sometimes books will have them like this with nothing in the middle of the two negative signs. Other times they have a parenthesis to enclose the second negative. So either way, it means multiplication of the two signs. So negative times negative becomes positive of these two signs, okay? So these Negative and negative becomes a big plus, I call it. Big plus. Okay? Two negatives together, big plus. Or you can just see it as negative times negative, positive. Now that we have this, these are the rules for addition and subtraction. If the signs are the same, we're going to add. And we keep the sign of the greater sign. If the signs are different, like in this case, we subtract and keep the sign of the greater uh, number. Okay, so in here we have a negative and a positive. We're going to subtract 5 minus 2 is 3 and keep the sign of the greater 1, which is a negative. In the next one, we have the same situation. A negative and a positive, and it doesn't matter if the signs are swapped, okay, if they are switched. Uh, as long as you have one positive and one negative, we subtract and leave the sign of the greater one. So 6 minus 4 is 2, and the greater sign in this case is 6, so it's positive. And we don't need to put the positive in here. You can see that in the 8 we didn't put plus and we didn't put plus in here. Okay, so before we start with the scenarios, let me define some things in here. And so we have this polynomial. Um, it's actually a trinomial because it has three, three terms. And so from here we're going to be selecting for these definitions. The first one is variables. Variable says a letter that represents an unknown value, a value that changes. And so in here, the variables that I can see is x and y. And so we can say that the variables are x and y. Okay? The coefficient is a number that multiplies the variable, meaning right next to the variable. And so next to x is negative 8. We're going to include the sign, okay? So negative 8 is one of the coefficients. The other one is 4, 
positive 4. We don't need to put the plus, we just write 4 because we already assumed that if it doesn't have the sign, then it's a positive number. And finally, it says constant, a fixed value, a number with no variable. And so in here, again, we include the sign and the only one that we have uh, without a variable is negative 3. So after we have these definitions, let's go ahead and use it in real life because I know you have seen it before, but how does this apply to real life? Okay, so let's look at this one first. It says, you go to the store. You buy groceries for $25. You also buy $2 candy for each of your children. How much is the cost of your trip? So first of all, we're going to identify the unit. What are we talking about? Is it all about, like the final, if we were to do the total amount, what are we talking about? Is it about the candy? Is it about the groceries? Or when we create a the total of all this, what are we talking about? Well, it's money, right? So the unit we are going to get the total of is money. Because it says how much is the cost of your trip? So we're talking about the cost. The variable, we're going to put what variable we could use. And it's actually any variable. You can put M for money or you can put um, G for grocery. Well, it doesn't matter. You can put X, which is usually the one that is used the most. But what does that X represent? Well, you go to the store. You buy groceries for $25. We already know that for sure we're buying 20, we're spending $25, right? We're spending that money. You also buy two dollars worth of candy for each of your children. Now, how many children do you have? How many children do I have? How many children? It all depends on reality, how many children the person who's doing the problem has. And so we don't know how many children, so we're gonna add for each child, and we don't know how many there are, two dollars. So, Together the $25 worth of groceries plus the $2 worth of candy for each child will give me the total cost of my trip to the store. So in here, X is the, again the unknown value. It represents the number of children. And if we're talking to a teacher, then it might be the children in the classroom, which may vary from class to class. Okay, so X represents the number of children. The constant in here, well in here is the $25. And what does that represent? It represents the cost for the groceries. Okay, and the coefficient, coefficient is the, the number multiplying with the variable, which is two. And what does the two represent? Well, the two represents the candy money that you're spending for each child, okay? Cost of candy per child, for one child. And finally, the next one says, how many children can you buy candy for with $30? Well, think about it. And this is, I'm, I'm gonna ask you to do this one just mentally for now, uh, because we're not getting into equations um, and solving them, but if you have, you have to spend $25 in groceries, 
and then you have $30, that means that you're gonna pay with the $30, you get the $25 worth of groceries, plus, you know that each candy costs $2. How many can you buy? Well, two times two is gonna be $4, that's 29, and one dollar left. Okay, you get one dollar of change. What about with $50? Well, you're gonna spend the $25 for groceries, and you have $24, but then each one costs. So basically this is the money that you're spending, I mean, two children. For $30 you can uh, spend for two children. In here, 24, 25, then you have 25. You're also gonna have $1 left over because you are able to buy with one dollar left over and then you have twenty four dollars but you they cost two dollars so that's gonna be fourteen no twelve twelve two times twelve is twenty four and you have one dollar left okay so that gives me the twenty, the fifty dollars. Two times twelve children. Two dollars for each children is twenty-four dollars. Plus twenty-five is forty-nine. Plus one left is fifty. Okay, let's look at another scenario. And you can always rewind. Okay. So it says you are throwing a party. Each friend brings you two bags of fruit and a box of fruit. You invite some friends over. How many fruits will you have in the party? So what are we talking about in here in general? When you put it together, what will you have? Well, the question is how many fruits will you have in your party? So it's not talking about the friends, it's talking about the fruit. So that's gonna be my unit. That's what we're talking about. The unit is pieces of fruit, okay? And let's do the, equate, the expression in here. So let's see, what does each friend bring? They bring two bags, um, X. So each friend brings two bags. Okay, we're going to represent bags with X. And a box of fruit, we're going to represent the box with Y. So plus one y. We can put the one as a coefficient, but usually the coefficient one is not written. So it's going to be two x plus y. However, we do not how many friends we are going to invite. It says you invite some friends over, but everyone brings both of this. So this is where you have to be careful. Both, all the friends, so meaning that if it's two, we multiply all of these by two. If it's 10 friends, we multiply all of these by 10, but we don't know, so we're going to represent it with another variable. And we have x, y, we can put f for friends, or we can put z, which is uh, usually what goes with x and y. They use x and y and z. Um, so when you multiply this z by both of these, that means that they are all bringing, each friend is bringing both of these, the two bags of fruit and the one box of fruit, okay? All of that multiplied by the number of friends, which we don't know, that's why we represent with a letter, uh, gives us the total number of fruit that we're gonna have. So what does the, variables represent well we have three variables the x it says two bags the two represents the number of bags the x represents number of 
fruit inside of each bag. The Y represents not the num the boxes of, of fruit, but the fruit inside of each box. Number of fruit inside of each box. And the variable Z, it's the number of friends coming over. Okay, the constant uh, is not applicable. We don't have a constant here. There is no fixed num value, I mean number with no variable, so no constant. The coefficient, we have a one, in, a two in here, so the two represents the number of bags of fruit. And the one in here that it's not written represents number of boxes of fruit that each friend brings. Number of boxes of fruit, okay? The factor, meaning something that is being multiplied, this is multiplying with all of this, so it's Z is a factor, and it represents the number of friends, whoops, um, the other factor is 2x plus y. Factor is just numbers that multiply with each other. For example, if we have 2 times 8, 2 is a factor, 8 is a factor. If we put 6 times x plus 5, 6 is a factor. And since it's being multiplied with all of this, right, this means multiplication if there is nothing in the middle, this is another factor, okay? This is one factor, this is another factor. So 2x plus, plus y is another factor. And what does that factor represent? The fruit each friend brings. The fruit each friend brings. Okay, so that's just figuring out what each part means. Now, let's make it a little bit more challenging. It says, what would, it, what would happen if one friend brings an extra three bags of fruit? An extra three bags of fruit. And it's only one friend, okay? So you would have the Z times 2X plus Y, but then one of the, these friends brings this plus another three bags. Okay, bags. So what are the bags represented by x? So you just put plus 3x, because only one of the friends brings that. If every friend brought an extra three, then you would put it inside. But it's only one of them, so only an additional 3x outside. What would happen if every friend brings an extra box of fruit? We're talking about uh, this, but rather the initial one, okay? So it's going to be z times 2x, but there it's saying every friend, so all of this, brings an extra box. So boxes are y, before it was only one y, but now everyone is bringing an extra one, so it's going to be 2y, okay? So that's why it goes, because it's every friend, that's why it goes inside, and it's an extra box, so we're adding another box to the boxes. So with this, you're able to work on 1.1, and I hope you have fun.